Now, we ought to have compassion on the ignorant. Now, ignorant because they're unsaved or ignorant even when they are saved. We need to have compassion on people, especially the new believers. You know, when people just start getting into church, you know, it's... It, <laughs> It's not our place to just go around with this attitude of, of having like, oh man, you do this and this and this. I can't believe you do that. You know, and just, and just harassing people when they just, maybe they just got saved a week ago or something. Or like, you know, we had a visitor last week. They just got saved that morning. You know, I'm not going to go up to that guy and be like, you know, start pointing out. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to, you know, point out whatever that I could point out just, just by looking at somebody, right? We have compassion on that person. Hey, he just got saved. He's ignorant to, a, to what the Bible says. He's ignorant on like everything. So we're not going to go and, and start trying to just rebuke him on everything because that's not what he needs at that time when, he, when you're a babe. And, you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't rebuke a baby, you know, a newborn, and in, uh, suckling, like they're not going to know what you're, what you're saying and what you're doing. They need compassion. They need help. We need to be able to identify and, and have this compassion in ourselves that we can be compassionate on the ignorant to help them to, see, to understand and see the truth and um, understand that, you know, we also have our own infirmities. We have our own weaknesses. No matter how strong you think you are, you have weaknesses too. You understand that about other people and be able to show compassion towards people when they do have their weaknesses. You know, last week I went into, you know, who we should break fellowship with and what things, you know, what are the criteria? What do, what do we look at? And 1 Corinthians 5 had a big list and those things that, yeah, they're very serious sins. And for people who are not ignorant, right, people who already know this stuff, people who we referred to as a brother or a sister in Christ, someone that should know better, and they're getting involved with this, yes, it's appropriate for their benefit to love them enough to shun them and to not have anything to do with them and not to eat with them and to put that wicked person away from among you. But now I want to go back to dealing with people who are unsaved or maybe family members or other people that just, you know what? They're in the world. And shunning people like that. The, this is not what 1 Corinthians 5 was about. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 9, I'll read this. We read this last week. I'll read it again. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. So he said, I already told you you shouldn't just be hanging out with fornicators. But he wants to clarify himself. He says, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or with the dollars. For then must you needs go out of the world. He said, I'm not talking about just unsaved people in the world that you just can't have anything to do with them. You can't have a meal with them. You can't do anything at all. He's saying, because then you just wouldn't be able to talk to anybody and you just have to kind of go out of the world. It's not that he wants us to start a commune and build a building and have this big fence around us and be like, we're going to be separate from the whole world and we're not going to have anything. To, they're all wicked sinners and we're going to be righteous in here and we're only going to deal with righteous people and you know, forget everyone else out there. No, that's not, that's, that, some people get that kind of mindset because they're completely backwards on the whole point and purpose of the Bible and us being here. <laughs> the point is to go out and reach people with the truth, not to just distance ourselves from everybody and everything. Now, there's a difference between being best friends with somebody and, and spending all of your time with someone you know, I don't think we ought to be doing that with people who are unsaved. That can be a bad influence just because you're, you're getting real close and spending a lot of time, your personal time with them and seeing what they do and letting that rub off on you. But at the same time, it's, you're not going to treat them as someone who's a brother in Christ that you know is a fornicator and be like, you know what, I'm not going to go eat to lunch with you. They're two different things. The people who are unsaved, just out in the world, go ahead and have a meal with those people. Go ahead and have that type of a, you know, acquaintance, relationship, or whatever, or especially if it's family members, do family functions. Hang out with them. It's fine. You ought to love your family, and we ought to be a good example and have compassion on the ignorant and have compassion on people who are out in the world. They're not, 
the, you know, these brothers that know better and everything else are just people out in the world. We need to have compassion on people like that. We need to balance the hard preaching, the hard attitude against sin when dealing with people in the sinful world. Yes, in church, we're going to thunder against it. Yes, we're going to call out wickedness for what it is. Yeah, we're going to call out the deeds of this world, that they're evil and that they're wicked. And we're not going to back down on that. We're not going to apologize if someone out in the world find, you know, understands or hears us or, or knows that we believe a certain way. We're not going to say, oh, no, sorry, I don't. We're not going to make excuse. Not at all. We're going to continue to proclaim the truth. But the way that you deal with somebody who's ignorant, who's unsaved, is different than the way you deal with someone who already ought to know better. 